Hello and welcome to WMI Event Bindings with Power Events, connecting WMI filters and consumers. This module is available for download at powerevents.codeplex.com. My name is Trevor Sullivan and I will be taking you through this module on how to create WMI event bindings. This video assumes that you have a basic understanding of WMI or Windows Management Instrumentation, Windows PowerShell version 2, and you should also, also watch the videos on filters and consumers. So event bindings, what are they? They are the glue between event filters and consumers. So once you've created a WMI event filter and a WMI event consumer, you need some way to bind these together so that they know how to talk to each other. That is what the purpose of the binding is. The event bindings have two prim primary properties, the filter and the consumer. Each of these properties contains a reference to the filter and the consumer that you would like to bind together. Unlike event filters in WMI and event consumers, the event bindings do not have a name property. That means that it'll be a little bit more tricky on uh, managing these bindings in the future. So the Power Events module includes a new WMI filter to consumer binding commandlet. There's two mandatory properties on this commandlet, the consumer and filter properties. Now, these two properties can be fed either by inline code that defines your consumer and filter, or if you already have a consumer and filter that you would like to use, you can simply get references to these and then pass the references to the new WMI filter to consumer binding function. Remember that unlike the filters and consumer classes, the binding does not have a name property. So here's a couple of quick examples. The first example is the easiest. We create a consumer by using the new WMI event consumer commandlet. We create a WMI event filter using the new WMI event filter commandlet. And finally, we use new WMI filter to consumer binding with the consumer and filter parameters to create the binding between the consumer and the filter. Now the second example is essentially the same thing, but all we're doing is we're using external scripts to define our consumer and filter in line. So that's all there is to event bindings in WMI. The next steps for you are to download the Power Events module if you haven't already at powerevents.codeplex.com, explore WMI with WMI Explorer from Sapien Technologies. It's a free community tool that allows you to explore WMI and discover what you can do with it. Next, try out the samples in the samples folder of the Power Events module and read the documentation that's included in the documentation folder of the Power Events module. This will go into greater detail about filters, consumers, and the bindings. Again, my name is Trevor Sullivan, and we have been talking about Power Events with PowerShell. Feel free to give me a shout on Twitter or at my email address or on my blog. And thanks again for watching. See you next time.